Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this tutorial, I wanna talk about adding motion blur to your photos and how you can do that inside Photoshop using the blur filters. So I've got two real world examples here, one of a car because a lot of people are into car photography and it looks awesome when you can get that background nice and blurry, but make sure that your subject is super sharp. And what we take from and what we take and learn from this photo here, we're gonna be expanding on to this photo here, where we're gonna actually be um, directing our blur so it looks like the blur is kind of coming at an angle here, and it looks like we are actually going down the street on this longboard. So believe it or not, this photo is actually taken completely standstill uh, for the sake of this tutorial. So let's get started here. I have this photo of this beautiful Lamborghini done in a nice or epic wrap that was um, done by my friends at Neon 9. So first thing we're gonna be doing is masking out our subject. Now this is, uh, it can be done many ways. You can essentially use your favorite masking tools. If you wanna get a perfect mask, you can go and use your pen tool. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna be using the uh, selection tool here, quick selection tool, and we're gonna be hitting select subject at the top. Now this will do a pretty good job at masking out our subject, but we will have to kind of push and pull these edges here. So just zoom in with Z on your keyboard and just kind of making sure, okay, that's not what we want. We wanna get something like that, that's a little better. We just wanna try and get the best mask that we can around this Lamborghini. So a little bit down here, it kind of missed. So we're just gonna hit the Alt key to get that little negative sign on our selection tool so it snaps in. And this looks pretty good. So holding Z and Alt, we're just gonna zoom back out. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be holding Control J to duplicate just our subject. So now what we've done is we have separated our subject from the background. Now, what we need to do from here is we need to essentially fill our background. So if we hide our subject, you can see that our subject is still here, but we need that to be gone or else when we blur our background, it's going to start pulling from the car and it's just not going to look realistic. So how do we do that? There's actually two ways that we could do that. But first, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be holding um, control and we're going to click on our layer that we just extracted. So our subject. And what that will do is give you a general selection of whatever your layer is. Now what we're gonna be doing is going to our background layer here and we're gonna come up to select. We're going to go down to modify and expand. Now the reason we're going to be expanding our selection, we'll just do five pixels for now. So as you can see, what this expansion did is it's kind of selecting just outside of our general selection of the car which is what you want because when you actually go to fill in our background, we don't want the uh, car itself to kind of leave a little outline because once we start pushing and pulling with the blur, it's going to be accentuated and you will see it start getting stretched. So now what we're going to be doing is we're gonna right click. Oops, sorry, we have to make sure a some sort of marquee tool is selected. So if you have your move tool, it won't let you do it. Make sure your marquee or your selection tool is selected. We're going to right click and we're going to come down to content aware fill. This will open up another dialog box. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job right off the bat of just filling in our selection. So we're just going to hit OK. And you'll see that Photoshop will create a new layer. So we're just going to hit Control D to deselect. And now we have a layer here. So if we actually hide our subject, you can see that our subject has been removed from the background. Now this isn't the best job, but that's okay because once we start blurring this, as long as there's no um, like color codes coming in from the car, like these blues and these pinks, it will still brush out clean once we go to actually apply the blur. So where do we go from here? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be uh, creating a flattened layer. So we're going to be just selecting our layer that the content aware fill has just created. So if we just hide this, you can see that it will actually create a new layer with your fill. And we're gonna select this layer as well. And we're gonna hit Control J. Now the reason I do it this way is because I like to work in a non-destructive workflow. So if for any reason I wanna go back to these two layers, I have the power to do so. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna merge layers. 
So now we have our background layer. We can even just hide these. We have our background layer without the car and we have our car layer on top. So from here, we're gonna be applying our blur. But what we're gonna be doing first is converting our background into a smart object. Now, the reason we convert it into a smart object is again to have that reverse control where we can go back and make adjustments after we've already edited it. So I'm gonna show you both ways and why you wanna use a smart object. So I'm just gonna duplicate this. This one here, I'm just gonna double click and rename this the smart object. And we're gonna uh, just hide the top one here. Actually, you know what, we're gonna do the top one first, but, and then I'll show you why you want it to be a smart object. So on the top layer, we're gonna come up here to filter, blur gallery, and we're gonna be adding a path blur. So when you add the path blur, you're gonna see a couple things happen. Um, you've got this little arrow key, which basically symbolizes the direction of your blur. And you've got your speed, taper, and a couple settings on the right side here. So of course your speed is going to be the amount of blur. And the reason we use path blur over motion blur is because you get this taper setting, which makes it really realistic because it actually lets you taper off your blur and it adds a much more uh, realistic effect than just using the motion blur where it just grabs the pixels and essentially stretches them left and right. Now we can of course center our blur, which we're gonna wanna do. Now this is a, a cool option to play around with if you want something to be more directionalized. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna hit center blur. And now we have our endpoint speed. You can of course adjust this if you want it to be uh, faster or slower. You can see this little red arrow that's sort of directing, showing you the general direction. And we can edit our blur shapes if we would like, but we're not gonna be doing that. So don't worry too much about this. You can play with it if you would like. Just adding a little bit of endpoint speed is roughly what I like to do. And we're gonna hit okay. Now, as you can see, once it applies the blur, we've applied it to our layer and it has been only applied to this layer and you can't essentially go back and change the blur at all. Once it has been applied, it has flattened the layer and just created a blur layer. So this is where smart objects come into handy. We're just gonna hide this layer and our smart object layer, we're gonna right click on it and convert to smart object. So now that it's a smart object, when we go to apply our filter, so our path blur, we're just gonna do the exact same thing. We will just increase our speed, bring up our taper to get that nice tapered look, maybe affect the direction. I like to put it on just a little bit of an angle, so kind of the direction of the car since it's on a slight angle. And we'll add just a little bit of that endpoint speed. Now I think this is a little bit uh, strong on the effect for the speed of the car, maybe something like that. And we'll hit okay. And you will see that now we have an actual layer mask, a smart filter applied to our layer. Now the benefit of this is say you want at any point to go in, maybe you wanna add more blur. If you had done it the original way where you had just applied it to a regular layer, you will not be able to do that. You would have to recombine these two layers and reapply the effect. But with the smart layer, if we just double click on blur gallery, it will reopen our blur and we can edit it as we like, which is awesome. So again, a non-destructive workflow that will let you just kind of have fine tune adjustments as you get deeper into your edit. So with that said, we have essentially completed the full edit. Now you've got what looks like some motion. It looks like the car was in a little bit of motion when the photo was taken. Now I think this effect is a little bit strong for this particular image, but it um, just kind of goes over nicely how we can uh, separate the background and apply our blur, as well as which blur to use and the correct techniques in order to get the effect. So now we're gonna be going a little bit deeper and I'm just gonna show you how you can kind of create something more directional with an image like this. So again, first thing we're gonna do, unlock our layer and we're gonna select our subject, select subject. Just let Photoshop do its thing. So it's did a pretty good job here. We'll just uh, click around to just get a better selection. Let me get these trucks in here. Let's hope it gives us a nice selection. Again, you can use your pen tool or whichever selection tool you would like. The idea here is to just have your subject masked out and something like this, probably good enough for the sake of this tutorial. Again, I would go in here and spend a lot more time masking this out and making sure it is perfect. 
um, for an actual photo to be posted, but for the sake of this, this looks all right. So once that's done, we're gonna hit Control J to duplicate just our subject layer. And now we're going to hit Control, click back on our subject layer. We're gonna come down to our background layer and we are going to go to, whoops, we're gonna go to, oh, sorry, we're just gonna right click, Content Aware Fill. Actually, we missed a step, cancel. We actually have to go to Select, Modify, Expand. Completely forgot this step, hit OK. And for a picture like this, since it's a rather large photo, this one I think is 4,000 pixels brought straight from Lightroom, as opposed to the other one, which is just 1080, we're gonna need a bigger um, expansion. So we're gonna go back into Select, Modify, Expand, and we'll do 20 pixels and see what that does. So that is a lot better. So now we have a full um, outline of our subject. We're gonna right click and Content Aware Fill. And we're gonna let Photoshop do its thing. And actually, that was a rather awesome um, result here. It looks pretty clean to me. Uh, we're just going to hit OK. And once that is done, we will have our subject separated from our background. Just giving it a little bit of time to think here. Now, depending on um, the size of your image, of course, it will depend, it will determine how fast Photoshop is able to make these adjustments. So, this is a massive image. If we just go image size, you can see it is a huge image here, um, but that's all right. So now what we're going to be doing is combining these two layers. So select them, control J to duplicate, right click, merge layers. And now we have our background layer separated from our subject. So with our background layer selected, we're going to right click, convert to smart object. And once that is converted, we're going to go up to filter and we're going to apply our filter gallery path blur. So once you apply your path blur, you will be met with the exact same um, scenario as we just had. You've got your arrows, key arrow keys here. Now, if it doesn't show up right away, it could just be buffering in. Or if you adjust the speed, it might just like pop up. Sometimes it's a little visual bug within Photoshop. But what we're going to be doing is setting these in a direction so it looks like we're kind of going like the street is uh, kind of coming speeding by us here whoops not, not what we want to do there kind of look like it's speeding by us so we're gonna grab the existing one that it gives you the default we're gonna drag this to the corner and we're gonna drag it to the middle of our screen we're gonna now create multiple of these that are gonna be forcing our blur direction because right now we're just telling our blur we want to go in this direction, but we want it to tell our blur to go out this way, this way, and this way. So we can do that by just clicking and dragging and whoops, there we go, and clicking and double click to paste your um, anchor point. So if you just click and then click, it will actually let you like create curves, but that's not what we want. So we're going to go back and we're gonna click and double click so it only goes in one direction. Now you can add as many of these as you would like to essentially correct the blur. Now, as you can see, Photoshop is doing the best that it can to kind of make the blur go in the direction of these paths. So you can see here some visual bug where you've got this one going down, this one going up, and Photoshop is kind of blurring it on an angle here. That can be easily fixed by just adding another anchor point. So personally, I would just add multiple anchor points just to get this as clean as possible. We don't need that one there. And we're just going to add one going up. Okay, nope. Photoshop is bugging out just a little bit here. Does not want to get rid of this one. Okay, it's going a little slow. We're just going to bring that, nope, other direction. We want to make sure that the arrow is pointing out. There we go. And that looks good to me. So with that done, we can now adjust our speed and kind of go for the effect we're looking for. So with this one, you definitely want to bring up our taper and maybe reduce the speed to about there. Maybe our endpoint. Do we really need this? Not, not too much. We'll just keep that around the default. And with these settings complete, we're just going to hit OK. and let Photoshop, it's actually just um, 
buffering a progress bar on my other screen here. And there we go. So there you have it guys, a complete um, blur effect that kind of looks like we are now moving down the street. Now of course you can play around with it and um, kind of might want to get something a little bit cleaner than what's going on here. And of course, since we have a smart object, we can easily just double click on our blur gallery and that'll let us go back in and make the adjustments. See, as I pull these out, it will automatically kind of fix this uh, visual bugged area that's going on here as Photoshop's trying to grab points from all in, in this little area and pull them out. So you might just have to give it a little bit more space in the middle there to just think as to which direction it should be pulling stuff in. And we'll just hit okay again. So that kind of fixed that little um, error in the middle here. But guys, that is essentially it for this tutorial. Um, relatively simple, but very effective. Cool effect that you can do on your photos. And with that said, I will catch you guys in the next one.